Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today is Tuesday, September the 21st, 2021. I now call the San Juan Economic Development Corporation meeting to order. First item on the agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance. All rise, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start with our, our item number three is our roll call. We'll start with our far right. Pedro Contreras, Secretary. Mayor Sanchez, VP. Marco Villegas, Mayor. Arturo Guajardo, Jr. Yes, Counselor. Our next item four is public comments. Anybody registered for public comments today, Ms. Martha? Very good. Then we'll move on to item number five, our director's report. Mr. Arjona. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman of the board, uh, board members, commissioners, staff, good evening. The first item on the uh, director's report, we have the uh, save the date for the Gilman Stained Glass Museum. It is not a grand opening. It's not a ribbon cutting. It's more like a VIP type of thing for a blessing. It's going to be taking place on the October the 9th, 2021. She's going to be sending us the, uh, I guess, the password. Cutting or an opening, she said, no, no, this is not a ribbon cutting yet. Yes, down the road. The other one is the blue wave. Uh, if you pass by the, uh, the frontage, you can see the walls already coming up. Right project, uh, it's also a, on target and we'll discuss a little bit further on the, on the back. Uh, Smile so Magic, they're going to have their grand opening ribbon cutting. Uh, that'll be taking place, Ms. Martha, that'll be next week on Wednesday. Right? Yes. Right here. I'm sorry. Magic here. I've got it for Tuesday, the 20th. Yes. Right. Uh, they, it'll be at uh, 2.30 or 3.30? 3 p.m. Yeah, we try to do it after working hours and uh, we tried to do it earlier. They couldn't do it. That was the only available time that they had. So um, I know a lot of these ribbon cuttings are tough on, for the board members, but as long as staff is representing the office, right? You guys are doing that. Right, we're doing that. Um, other than that, on, on your packet, we have the calendar events. There's also another one that um, that was given to us. Uh, we visited, or we had the uh, George the Watts barbecue. Uh, Last uh, Thursday was very well uh, attended, but a lot of our staff was there. A lot of uh, they, they, he had a very good turnout. Again, the food is delicious. The food is great. Uh, so we had that uh, very successful grand opening ribbon cutting. Um, there's another, and like I said before, uh, th there's a calendar events in, in your packet that we're going to be updating almost on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and we're going to be forwarding that to you all. Uh, but there's another one that, that, that is coming up, which is Project D, and we'll discuss that at the, uh, the back. Uh, the, these people already visited with us before, but I think now they're, they're in the uh, time of the, uh, where they really kind of move on with the construction. But we'll discuss this in executive session on the Project D. I think it'll be a very good thing for the, uh, for the city. Uh, Rancho? Rasco. Rancho Grande? Oh, the new. The Osevna, the Raspa stand years ago? The new place, the nursery? Next to, on, on the south side. Oh, next to it. Okay. How about that nursery? That one we, I, I know. Stopped by, uh, we stopped by uh, Laura and myself uh, 
two days ago, yesterday, I think, and uh, we gave her a card. They're going to they're gonna reach out to us when they're ready for the river. Right. How yeah. far along are they? Raulito. Yeah, oh, they opened up already. I mean, they're opened up already. Yeah, they already opened up. They are, they're, they're been they're doing real well, he said. I didn't see a sign. Yeah, there's a sign. It's on the tropical, Raulito's tropical flowers or something like that. Oh, so maybe do a ribbon cutting with yeah, them too? Yeah, we, we talked to him uh, whenever, within the next two, three weeks, he said he's going to reach out to us. Yeah, cool. so, can, can I, I know pandemic and, and, and sometimes it's hard to make and stuff like that. Can I make sure that the, that we extend the invitation to everybody, and, and I know it happens, but uh, and yes, it, it, uh, they will always include the office of the restaurants and everything else like that. Don't have that. If that's a problem, don't have that in our way. And it's been to most of them, the past two of them, you know, so, so just to be a little bit more aware of that to make sure that we invite them, whether they show up or not, but let's make sure we extend the invitation. That on miles away, your oh. ticket. So. Good. Anything else? Any questions or comments, Mr. Contreras? Your report on uh, number six. I know I. Oh, I, not too the long. rural affairs revolving loans. No, I didn't hear anything on that. That's on your director's report, Mr. Hona. Are you looking at a different one? I think you are, because you were skipping around different ones here. Thank you. Yes, it was a different agenda that I had. Uh, yeah, as far as that one. Yeah, he was <laughs> bouncing around. He wasn't going in order. I apologize for that. Yes. Okay, on that one, yes, uh, we actually reached out to the TDA department and uh, we asked about the, uh, the funding, the monies, how do we capitalize on those monies as we've been discussing in the past. Uh, this was actually done back in 2011 where the, uh, the monies, the city actually was responsible for those monies. Them as directors of the revolving loan committee. So it, it was a committee comprised of all the board members of EDC. And what happened was that the, the monies, w whenever somebody w wanted to apply for a particular loan, it will go before the EDC to approval. Uh, so that, that, that happened back in 2011, February the 8th, where the city commission took a, it was on a meeting. And uh, they, they actually had the uh, EDC to be the board members or the directors of that uh, fund committee. Now, we did talk to the TDA and asked about the different possibilities of that. Now, keep in mind that when this took place, it was the city was a non-entitlement. Now it's an entitlement city based on the population. What is the population? We're looking at, we're waiting on the uh, census and we're waiting at, I want to say 36, 37. Yeah, so we're hopefully that very close to it. We'll probably be at the 42, 43. So the question that Chris just asked on the revolving loan was, when did it go away? Why didn't it stop? What's been happening with it? So I'll be telling us that back in 11, the EDC board members were appointed to be in charge of that. How did the city was stuck with the, the uh, collecting the monies? And we kind of figured, well, that was because we we're taking care of the books, but more than likely it was on the EDC side, and then they transfer over. But make the long story short, it was always at the city side that they got those monies. So when we called the TDA, it was what can we do with these monies? And there was a couple of options. One of them is you can either zero it out, close the account, send the monies back to another municipality, another CDBG entity. Well, we don't want to do that. So what can we do with those monies is come back to the city and let the city select a, a eligible project for us to take, out, take on. And it has to be like any, anything that has to do with infrastructure improvements. Why not the EDC board members? That's the, uh, that's, that's what, the that's, right, that, that's what the rules are now. Okay, so the rules have changed. Right, and, and 
I spoke to Mr. Valentin. He, he works for Mr. Hollis Rutledge, and this guy was, he worked for so many years with the PDA office, and he was helping me out, guiding us. And he did say, you can still use the monies, but it's, it's now on the city side. So we need to bring it back before the city, go before a, you know, an agenda item and, and, and make a resolution. This is, what's, this is what we can use the monies for. This is eligible project. Let us know how is it that you guys want to take on, on those monies. Whether it's sewer improvements or water improvements, it'll be completely up to the eligible project and up to the city commission to decide what. Those are loans, right? Those are, and see, this is uh, still the, the questions that we have. Because uh, the monies. It's called the revolving loan program. Well, yes. And the monies are the cities. And we still have answers, questions that we need, to, we need answers on. But as far as we know, those are monies. And we were kind of confused as to what they're telling us is that you can close up the, the, uh, the funding, send it back, or you can use it as an eligible project for the city. Not as a loan. Not as a loan. Right. Let the city use it as a project. So. If I'm not mistaken, my experience with this, and, and it'd be helpful if we're involved in these uh, communication, or at least bring us backup documentation, unless I'm missing it here, but I didn't see any backup documentation to what you just presented in our packet. Did you put what I have it? is a, an agenda item. Okay. So I mean, you I, can have a copy of this if you like. Yeah. And if you like, I can probably, and, and it's just unfortunate that Mr. Valentin can, can come, come over. So, Mr. President, one more question. Mr. Arjona, you didn't answer Mr. Ojardo's question. What happened that we, the city did, we'll put a stop to it. Over the time, the, change, the rules changed. It sounds like that over time, the rules changed. Right. That's exactly what I understand. So when no one, it was never functionable, no one moved on it, now we have to, Well, right? that's not correctly, that's, oh, oh, the bosses. that's not correctly accurate. And let me tell you why. This is one of the benefits of having board members sitting in a board for so long is we can remember that we've been asking information about this for a while. And if I'm not mistaken, I was told that we weren't able to use these funds. Now you're saying that we're able to use it, right? Probably what we should do at this point is for the next meeting, why don't you bring us the new rules and regulations so that we can continue to learn about it and maybe get right. Mr. Valentino. Well, he's not even with you all anymore, is he? No, he is. He uh, is? This is Paco Valentino. Paco Valentino. Right. Who's the one that you lost? Okay. Yeah, maybe he could enlighten us a little bit more and answer all our questions and kind of kind of guide us in under the new guidelines that are in place now and see if there's anything that, that the city can use it. There was a lot of there was a lot of discussion, I recall. There is there's been a lot of discussion. I know for a fact I've been requesting information on the revolving loan fund as as an option for our community businesses to, to use for several years now. This is the first time I hear any information because at one time it was even difficult to find out where the revolving loan funds, where they're even coming from. This is the first time I see in writing that they're coming from the TDA. Right. Well, there are other revolving loan programs out there. I know the USDA's got one. I don't know if the city of San Juan would qualify. I know there's South Texas Development Council's got a program out there. There's there's other groups that we can maybe tap into. Under, under the USDA, USDA, we don't. So, so let me ask this, Mr. President: Why did the city chose to stop using this option? Stop. Stop. Well, that was that was before our time, so we we, we really don't know. We have no idea as to why it stopped. How long you been with the city? Within the past six years. You, you've chosen not to use this, that's what you're saying.
but with, with, with respect to your explanation, is that on the, why the city didn't pursue it or why the EDC? I don't think the city was was supposed to pursue it. Well, revolving door and not the city stuff to for protection of the city because you have a commissioners here and you don't have your attorney here for the city. Down. I mean, can we continue to learn about this and maybe for the next meeting? Because right now we've got we're going to have a lot of unanswered questions. I yes. Is that fair enough? I the dollar amount that we're talking about. What do we have there? Yeah. About two hundred and about two hundred and fifty thousand. That's <coughs> not new. I remember that. I remember that number given to us a while back. A while, a while back. A while yeah, back. that's not new. So one of the questions, at least clarifications, I would like is. When did the city decide to remove the board from handling this? So we're still in charge of the RLF. Well, the Sounds like the, the like the guidelines, the structure of how to change. That's what I, that's the explanation I'm hearing. So that's what we're going to want to get enlightened from by Mr. Valentin, so he can explain that to us. I don't think anybody chose not to have us appointed anymore. It sounds like the rules changed, so we can't be in charge anymore. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like to me that we're finally looking into it because now we have information. They're not issuing any more loans. They want us to close the account or either or, either or what Mr. Horn is saying is that the city keep it and use it for projects, which is they, they submitted a list to us of what we could spend it on. <coughs> if that's the case, then how our neighboring city Issuing, issuing out just a month ago, there was a, a clipping in the newspaper in reference to the RLF. How are they functioning with the RLF? All of no the idea. city of Alamo is doing all this. All I'm telling you is what the, 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 I don't remember her name, but. Let, let, let me rephrase that real quick. The, the, not city of Alamo, the EDC of the city of Alamo is utilizing this and they just gave out a check or a loan to one of the businesses in the city of Alamo. That's the reason why I, I don't understand why they're operating with it, the EDC, and we've not. Do we know what? Well, what I mean, the there's an application purple? process that might have been, and, and because we were staying there, because we didn't move on it, and at the time maybe they had the information and they did move on it. I mean, could that be, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, we're just thinking hypothetically here. Yeah. I mean, we could just call them ask. It could be another funding mechanism, you know? Or like it I could said. be another revolving loan, right? Because there's several different ones. That's my, that's my point. Yeah. This pr particular one. So there may be others that we can use with, as far as the EDC. So to continue the discussion at our next meeting, is that fair enough? I mean, we can continue to ask more questions with, with Mr. Valentin available to us next time? Or the one thing I want to make sure we get clarification on is if we're not gonna proceed working with this a TDA, RLF, and we have a neighboring city that's able to work with one, whether it's USDA, which USDA is just, a, uh, TDA is an extension of USDA pretty much, unless it's with, with another agency. But my, but my point, an extension of federal, federal government and, state, and state, government. right? Yeah. Okay, but they're, okay. So what I'm saying is, get us that one. Whatever the city of Alamo is able to use the EDC, we should be doing the same, giving the same opportunities to our business community. So that's what I'm saying. I reached out to Alamo, and they, they, they're using the USDA funding. USDA. Yeah, yeah. Totally different, totally different ballgame yeah, right. from what we're using. Right. Yes, sir. We don't qualify for USDA. I, I spoke to USDA today. They said we don't qualify. It's either under $25,000. Or there was another population. I mean, under twenty-five thousand population, or an un, unurbanized area, and we don't qualify under either category, so we're out of that one. So, so that answers the question. Yeah, that's they're using right. USDA, yeah, but we can continue to get more information on the one that we're using, right, oh, for next time. He has the answer. Perfect. Oh, he did call. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah.
Any other questions or comments so we can continue? Okay, so we'll get more information that on our next meeting on, on this subject. Okay, very good. Our next item is number six. We've got a presentation uh, on notice of funding opportunities. Government offices, uh, we visited with some offices and uh, th there were some opportunities, NOFOs, which is it's the notice of funding opportunities. So we asked Mr. John Pankers to come over and enlighten us as to what, there are six of them and only six, five of them we, we can actually qualify by. So I asked him to come over, give us a brief presentation as to what we can and cannot go and seek after. Okay. Mr. Pankers. So uh, as Ben mentioned, there are five opportunities out there. Unfortunately, right now, three of them are able to be applied for within the, the time frame that we have because two of them are, are very close in, in October and they're very uh, wide applications. So it takes some time to, to go through them and prepare them. But these three that I have in front of you are opportunities that the EEC can definitely apply for and uh, work towards. So the, the first one is the Travel, Tourism, and Outdoor Recreation Grant. Uh, this one ends, well, the application is due January 31st. There's no technical uh, due date for an application because it's a revolving uh, grant, but they would like it to be uh, submitted by January 31st, 2022. The maximum funding is $10 million for this. The minimum is $100,000, and this is an 80 to 100 percent grant. So depending on what the EDA uh, determines when they review the application, they can either say 80 percent or 100 percent grant. So. Uh, this, this can be used for a variety of different things, water and stormwater improvements, pier construction improvements, outdoor recreation and trail infrastructure, public, public access enhancement, uh, cultural arts and tourism facilities, accessibility enhancements. So this is, you know, th this is a, a grant that can be used to basically uh, move the tourism and recreation industry forward from the pandemic. So EDA, EDA is all about creating jobs, and the ARP, which is where these funds are coming from, are all about uh, post-pandemic uh, rehabilitation, basically. So this is 10, the $10 million that Ma maximum. Maximum mm -hmm. to request. And that's pretty much given throughout the whole state of Texas. Mm -hmm. is that this is, this is a, an opportunity for the whole United States. So this is, this is not just Texas. Okay. So, which is why I didn't include those first two applications because it's going to be very competitive. So we would want to have ample time to create the, the applications and submit. So the tourism that you mentioned, Senator, would that qualify? What would the EAD qualify? Yeah, uh, cultural arts and tourism facilities, tourist information center, visitor center, the like. Are matching? So it's it's. They have the option to do 100% grant, but most of the time it's going to be 80% 80, 80 grant, so it would be 20% matched from the, the EEC. So say, say somebody buys the hotel, the Sunhome Hotel, could we help them out with the same funds for, for that tourism? Like if they have a, a, a location or a center? Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not uh, distinctly helping one business, then you're about the community at large, that's fine. Private entity like that might not be feasible, right? Well, if if you're uh, just uh, talking private, about private setting buyer. up a if you're just talking about setting up a tourist center, then it would it be would, it, it would be completely fine. Okay. And if it's next to the hotel, that's fine too, as long as it's not, you know, in conjunction with the hotel, because then it's directly helping just one entity. So Can so you apply for the whole thing and fix the whole hotel? Uh, so, I mean, are, are you all speaking on buying the hotel and using it as a tourist? No, 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 no. Let, let's uh, not get it confused. Buy it. That's uh -huh. that's not it. It's or if somebody else buys it. Would we use those funds to to support them and to help them out? As long as it's uh, city owned, yes. Okay, so uh -huh. city owned. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we would have to purchase the hotel in order for us to qualify for this tourism center. City. Well, the city, the city has to buy. Mr. You didn't go specific to that. Well, they're right here. If you eligible. 
No, no, it, it, it can be, you know, it's, it's a, it could be used for any kind of tourism enhancements. If you're going to do uh, promotion, you can do multi-state and uh, nationwide promotion. You can do workforce training facility, capacity building program. So it's not just for, you know, that one. Mm -hmm. Promotion, we can use, we can use it for promotion to the Basilica or to our tourism with, with our trip. So it would have to be multi-state. That's the only thing about the, the promotion. It would have to be multi-state and nationwide, uh, uh, sorry, promotion. Otherwise, it would be getting into the state-funded promotion grant that they have also. So I, I can definitely, uh, you know, speaking on the hotel, I, I'm not sure of all the details, so I don't want to, you know, say yes to something. But if you guys do have an idea for it, you know. Well, your, your number two explains who's eligible there. Mm-hmm. Right? Section number two. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first one. Yes, that's the first one. The second one is the uh, Good Jobs Challenge. So like, like I said before, EDA is all, all about creating jobs. So this one basically uh, will help uh, create and implement industry-led programs, training programs, and uh, pr to provide for skills and connect unemployed or underemployed workers to job opportunities. So you can use this to develop a reg regional workforce training system, uh, program design, to identify uh, skills needed by the industry and the workers, and then program impl implementation to uh, deliver workforce training and the wraparound services to come with it. So that one, that one has a uh, application due date of January 26, 2022. The funding maximum is 25 million. The minimum is 1 million. And uh, like I said, those are those are the, the different uses for that. And that one is as, as well 80 to 100 percent, sorry, uh, grant. So it could be 20, it could be nothing. Mm -hmm. As long as they're from EDA, that's pretty much the standard 80-20? It, it's, it's basically the, uh, the standard. Say again? It's, it's up to, it's their discretion solely. And, you know, based, based on our, our location and uh, our community, I, I believe that they would consider the 100 just because we are in an area of need exactly so that that's you know basically the great job programs and the wraparound services that come with it it's pretty straightforward so uh, I'll move on to the next one unless you all have any questions on that so the next one is the economic adjustment assistance program this is a very wide uh, wide ranging grant there's not a lot of ineligible expenses uh, so this, this grant is to, to provide a wide range of financial assistance to communities and regions as they respond to and recover from the economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. The maximum funding is $10 million. The minimum is $100,000. And cost share is between 80 and 100%. So 80 to 100% grant. The uses, uh, like I said, is very wide ranging. You can do, use it for economic de de development, planning, or implementation projects to build economic resilience. You can use it to uh, develop uh, economic development planning or implementation projects that support workforce education and skills. You can uh, encourage job creation, business expansion, and uh, as, I, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of other uses for this grant. So th those are the three that I have for y'all that the EDC is eligible to apply for. The application due dates are, you know, a little far off, so we, we can have ample time to apply for these if, you know, that's what the EDC decides to do. Uh, like I said, it's, it's not due until 22, 2022, so depending on what you guys decide, if you guys have any questions about these, you know, definitely let me know so we have time to research and, and develop a, a project for this. Mr. President, my, my first um, question here in reference to all this is uh, who could provide us uh, examples of what other cities have used these grants for? So these are all brand new. Brand new, there's been nothing, nothing beforehand. These all came from the American Rescue Plan. Sky's the limit, guys. We just not need to put on.
Mm -hmm. and identify something that we think would be sellable or attractive to be and awarded this grant. And, 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 yeah, exactly, and keep in mind it's nationwide, so we, we do have to be very competitive, and we have to bring something to the table that they're going to actually look at and not just, you know, scrap away. So uh, that's, that's why there's plenty of, plenty of time to think about it. No need to rush and say this project, because we need to keep in mind that. that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, those, those three different ones cover a whole lot of area, so uh, <coughs> you guys really have a lot to play with, basically, right now, and to think about. Appreciate you uh, bringing us this information and yeah, definitely no uh, be in communication with you. We'll figure something out. That sounds good. Absolutely. If you guys have any questions, you know, uh, don't hesitate to call me, email me. I know Ben has my my contact info. I don't have any cards on me, but uh, <coughs> excellent. All right. Yeah, no problem. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we don't need any action on that. Our next item, number seven, uh, discussion and possible action, or seven one, is discussion possible action on downtown revitalization plan. If you all remember the last time we met, we said we had this uh, downtown mixed use project uh, study that was done several years back. Uh, we all agreed that a lot of uh, research had already been done that we could use this <coughs> as a tool to move forward from. So we have a chance to move? Yes, uh, we've got a multiple <laughs> ans multiple <laughs> answer quiz for you guys. Now, so with that said, do you, have you guys had an opportunity to look over that study, and do you guys have anything to share with the group as a whole and see how we can move forward with this idea? I want to begin by saying these are great options. The is always uh, where we're going to get the money. That's always the big question. Where we're going to get the money. So it kind of seems all we need to do now is uh, apply this to this. Apply this to this. Uh, the one thing that stood out while I was reading this is uh, how appealing is our city as you're driving in? Is it attractive enough? Uh, and another thing is, um, do we have enough uh, sidewalks? Can people come in and and uh, make their way from the shrine? from the Basilica, can they walk to businesses? Do we have that? So, um, and, and, and that, that's very hard to, to, to answer because as I drove by there, it doesn't seem like, yes or no? <laughs> yes or no. Be, just listen to this, uh, the threat that binds all these factors together is the concept of walkable streets. Do we have walkable streets? through and researched by this study and I even mentioned to our group sidewalk seems like something we could do rather than looking at a grand scale project of downtown revitalization that, that seems huge right but sidewalks we can do sidewalks and we can start chipping away at it you know we, we discussed that remember and we said well maybe maybe not if you take it in little pieces if we take that approach we'll start seeing immediate results we're looking at the at a big giant revitalization project then what I foresee is more time passing without us really getting anything done because when this was done had had this been followed through shortly thereafter all of this would have been done by now you know um, Juan would have been a way different level but listen to what it, what it says here which really stood out was that the Basilica is just basically a piece of agricultural just a building what people are really looking for is that spirit experience, that ex experience of feeling it, right? So I, th I think that goes back to the walkable streets. Do we have that to offer to the people who are coming here? They get this, the, the experience of the spirit of their religion, of their, their faith, but at the same time, are they able to walk to get a good experience of our city of San Juan? And it starts with the sidewalk. trail that the basilica has built definitely gets visited a lot 
you know. Uh, but our talk has been about the main corridor. What do we have to do? Uh, well, they can walk have away a lot of from the sidewalk. There. I don't know if it's complete. Would you be able to answer that? Yeah. You know, we, we started with the sidewalk stuff, which I want to say 2015, and we've only we only had enough money for the plumbing for the work first and on the outside. And then after that, we can do everything else because of the fact that it's got those double strips of sidewalk. Is there's going to be fiber for future connectivity, Wi-Fi, and then it's, and then once we do that, then let's continue with the sidewalk, and that'll be something that yes, you are absolutely right. Do we have access to walk from point A, which is let's say City Hall, all the way to the Basilica, without any interruptions? Absolutely no. We, we don't have that. Uh, I know that you guys discussed about maybe slowing down traffic between City Hall and all the way to the Basilica. That's something that we need to work on as well, but. Uh, I think at this point is the infrastructure that needs to be put in place, not the water, sewer, but, but the electrical part of it. That's what we need to maybe concentrate at first before we actually put the sidewalk on top of it. Our lighting is not enough? Because there's street lights, right? Am I wrong? Down here of the cost per block, and it tells you exactly, you know, it tells you exactly what you need, and and the amounts that it is needed to 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 finish the project. Decide what we want to do. I, I I'd rather go sidewalks really? first because I mean you, you, you have them. You, you, it, for as much as I read this back and forth, it, you need to give them that that, that space, and then you can. You know, dress it up as well as as much as you we can. But if they don't have the space, they're not gonna walk the dress, whatever, however, regardless how how you lit it up or not. There's gotta be some type of, of appeal to walk the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the, the, the new the new uh, the new restaurants are coming out, and if and I'm with with that infrastructure as far as the lighting is going to be some decorative lighting. So the lighting we have is just you know the pole lighting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be more of a decorative. So we, we need to work on that to get that. I'll probably be working like same half time. Half, you know. it's, 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 one thing we do is we just have it at, at one level tier of of, uh, of sidewalk versus I've ridden that my bike through there and it's yeah. crazy, and it's from uh, First Street all the way to <laughs> Old yeah, Three and, and past. And we discussed this the <coughs> last time about about a certain area being ready and some areas not being ready, right? Infrastructure wise, or you know. Okay. From first to railroad. So another question that we all had was whether all of the drainage, sewer, and water improvements had been done, what had been identified in this study, had they been done already? And I think your answer was in the end that yes, right? Down that whole corridor, all of those improvements were done? That was presented right? the last time we were here. So we're good with that. <coughs> all the way up to first street, like, like I said, there's only a certain area that's ready to go. I'd like to add the, uh, the beauty of it is that the street's already there, so we don't have to worry about the street. All we have to worry about is the east, the eastbound and the westbound uh, lighting, so we can have decorative lighting. So when you run it, when you're passing the expressway, you can actually look southbound and you can see a landing strip. You can see a landing strip of lights, and I think that that would be very appealing. So with what it sounds like, rock. what it sounds like, <coughs> to consolidate all of your comments here, it sounds like you'd like to see lights. And sidewalks down that, that we can accomplish if we all put our minds together. We can say, okay, this is what we want to do to improve tourism to the new museum and to our church, and let's tie it into <coughs> one of these grants. Or if that doesn't fly, then we'll figure out how to pay for it. If, if you go, right, that can be a project that we take on right there. If you could, if you could lighting do. and sidewalks right there. Put if uh -huh. and, and with the and with the lighting on that. Uh, Sidewalks on as long as there's infrastructure really like the Sandy, 
put in there. But we'll take it as a project and for everything together. What I'm envisioning, Mr. Wilhelmus, Mr. President, is that the project should be working hand-in-hand with the city hall. I'm hoping that if this project does come into fruit into light, it actually connects with the city hall at the same time. So when they're done, pretty much that strip is be done. And then once we're done, we're done there. And I start working on all the E3 or standard. I don't know. It sounds to me like we've made a lot of progress, guys. It sounds like now we're all in agreement that that's something we want to do, the lighting and the sidewalks. Go to page 52. It's broken down per block. And they'll tell you exactly what the book entails. And they'll break it down on exactly the process that we have to go through. So they'll tell you exactly benches, light fixtures, plants, handicap ramps. I think we already have that. Cross striping. It gives you a whole breakdown. So if we could pick and choose exactly what we want, you know, we could start something with this. But it already tells you exactly what it is. Page 52 shows you the breakdown per block, what it's going to take. The next thing I want to include, Mr. President, is because, well, it makes it very clear here that the landscaping is also a big, a big factor here. The landscaping, but landscaping improvements at that intersection of the expressway and Nebraska. So if we can improve, work with TxDOT and improve that landscaping, that will also definitely help us. We talked to that. I reached out to TxDOT not too long ago. And the reason we could not do anything, the construction, what's going on, because of all the changes that's going to happen. So they said you need to kind of hold back on that, which is the shrubs and, you know, putting some kind of welcoming sign, stuff like that. The lights underneath the expressway, like Westlaco and McAllen has. I think it was pointed out here to be the priority so far. Fair enough. Without aesthetics, people won't walk and want to do that. That's very important. So our focus will now be on the lighting and sidewalks to be followed immediately with landscaping once that project is completed, the expressway, right? Those are our thoughts right there. So we identified it. Next step? Right. Next step is what we're going to need to start thinking about. What is our next step? Do we want to bring in an architectural firm like we had thought of initially to help us with that? Or do we think we can do that on our own? That's what we need to decide. Right? But at least now we know what our goal is. And then we'll bring in our other team members like Hollis's office to see if they can go after some monies based on the project that we're coming up with. If you go to the economic, where is it, the tourism, it says water, pure construction improvement, new outdoor recreation, trails, infrastructure, and public access. It fits perfect. So, you know. Mr. President, if I may, I think we have capable staff of getting all that together. What they need from us is what we're looking for. And, and um, they need to, to present to us options of these are the different routes we can take. So would you like to uh, task them or Mr. our Hoyle staff yeah, to, to, to bring us those options? What, what are the different routes we can take to get the lighting, sidewalk, and landscaping? Uh, that gentleman I speak something? Yes. I, I would recommend we get an architect, give them this, and then let them tell us exactly well, what we steps we're going to go because I mean I'm going to be honest to you I'm not going to be able to, I mean we could do it don't get me wrong I'm only sure we could put our minds together all of us and create what it's needed but if you want to do it right you know I would have from to us it's going to be the like you said our go the and right. the goal. Yeah, I mean, they're the professionals that, that, that I know I know Mr. Garza and I spoke about this already be before and one of the recommendations him and I were bouncing back and forth was about hiring an architect firm so they can come over and say this is the design and then after that we can actually go out and solicit bids, go after the, the contractors, or whatever the case may be. But you're absolutely right. We, we can probably say, hey, I, I need a sidewalk, but what kind of a sidewalk? What's going to be the PSI? What's going to be the design? Something that's be, you know, above our league. Let them follow this. I mean, it's, it's I here agree. already. This is their they, Bible, they, It's already there. Maybe they can add to it. Maybe they can stick to that. Now, a lot of this stuff that is here, it's outdated. But maybe they can tweak it, like, like you're saying, and, and add to it. There's eighty-two thousand dollars per block. Yeah, well, those are obviously going to be outdated. Right, but, of course. But, and they're they're probably encompassing a lot of.
Correct. Probably Correct. the drainage improvements that already took place and all those other things. Right now we're just looking at lighting and sidewalk and landscaping later on when the, they finish the right. expressway. It's a broken down figure here on, on that. Architect firm to come over and maybe they can uniform it in a way that it's going to be from City Hall all the way to the frontage. You know, they can tie it together. I know we started at the frontage all the way to first and the sidewalk, but that was a, an in-house by TxDOT. So it was just a sidewalk with some uh, papers on it. <coughs> really no design, really no appealing to it. Uh, but, you know, there was a... So my, my idea is like he just mentioned two routes right there that occurred, right? Two examples on, on that project. So my, my proposal here is to have them continue work on that and just bring us the options of what they are. That's it. Okay. Right. That's it. Architect, and we suggest that maybe our in-house engineer <coughs> could do this, or we just give us options. Pa partner up with TxDOT, partner up with uh, the county, partner, whatever the case might be. L let them run with it, and right? then we'll just review And then that. we'll be ready. We'll be that much closer and ready to take action on what we want to do. The plan of what we're going to look at as far as we want to apply for any grants also from Right, right. Mm -hmm. Clarify the picture sure a little bit. Sure. Sure. Wow. Okay, very good, making progress. I don't think we need any action at this point, right? Okay, next item is 7-2, uh, discussion and possible action on fiscal year budget 2021-2022. Yes, uh, before you have the, uh, the proposed budget, uh, it's a balanced budget. I don't know if you had a chance to, to go through it, so you have any questions on that? If not, we can go item by item. I have Mr. Uh, Leroy Gonzalez here with us, the finance director. Uh, the uh, sales tax, as, as we discussed in a couple of minutes ago, we're doing very well. As, as you can see, we went from 1.1 to now the uh, to 1.31. So 1.3, yeah, 1.31. The other one is the refunding as far as general tax, <coughs> tax and the uh, the other stuff. Uh, this this month, compared to last last year, it was a 14% increase. So we're doing very very well as far as when it comes to sales tax. What is our fund balance here? On this, anywhere on these documents? Uh, it's not here. So you told me earlier it was around, we, are we close? Do you know, Mas or menos? 1.4? Does, does that sound right, Leroy, our fund balance today? Finder? But would, be, would it be a current? The audit report was a long time. That's, that's not a current one. It won't that's be not current. Tell me 1.4. Yeah. Okay. So on the expense side, the, are you proposing any major changes? No, sir, not at all whatsoever. Uh, we can go to a presentation as far as the salaries that they expect. Also leaving, that will be up to you all. Um, uh, we're asking the only thing that we're asking for that came up at one of our staff meet at the, the uh, budget workshop was a an additional computer specialist that will be housed at the city but it will be paid through we have a need for for media staff to be going with us at the ground ground breakings at the ribbon cuttings doing presentations and so on and so forth uh, so one of the discussions that came up at the uh, at one of the workshops, as a matter of fact, at the last workshop that we had, was let's uh, get the uh, the EDC to pay that that uh, that position and house them with the uh, with the city. Now, what is that going to do? That that's not just going to bring one person in, into the into the EDC. It'll bring pretty much the whole staff into the EDC, working together with the Don't EDC. We have that today, Mr. Arjona? Sorry. Don't we <coughs> isn't that the case today? No, we're, we're actually utilizing the uh, city staff, but they're not getting compensated for the work that is done on the EDC side. And, and, and the way we did it that way was, was because at what point we, we were not able to afford it. But the work that they're doing on the EDC side is really what the city is on. The city is actually doing some of the work that the EDC is doing. Fine. So but, the but they, they do a lot of work that uh, that has to do with the city. So instead of contracting it out, let's hire somebody full-time 
that would represent the EDC, not necessarily that one person, it'll be pretty much anybody that is available, like on a work order type of thing, and put them to use at the EDC. Like right now, we have the, the gentleman here that is working on the EDC, but it's on the city side. Right. So, but we pay, the EDC is paying the city for that, right? No. Aren't we paying for? Don't you pay for administrative services? Payroll. Administrative services, payroll. And HR. And HR, not, not the use of this deal and that no, person not doing this. Staff, anything. We absorb uh, the, uh, right? <coughs> Move that one to this seat. But we are paying the gentleman pretty, pretty good money. Uh, what's his name that does uh, some of the videos? He could record these meetings for us. Instead of him, yeah, that's hmm. not Well, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud. Yeah, it's not necessarily down to the board. We, we used to be him helping out and helping out the city through the IT through his IT department and his marketing. So that's where the figure is. Is that what you have listed here? This is the 44,600? So I saw last year's budget, and you don't have it broken down like that on the same page. Like you put units and price and amount, but last year's budget does, it's not broken down like that. Posting a new position, we broke it down like that. So you guys could see it. Now the pay is at 32,000 plus the French benefits comes at 44,600. Insurance and all of that. I want to say it's 32,000, Leroy. The extra salary of that media specialist. Base. All with benefits and everything. Yeah. That's the only big difference here in the whole budget. Every no, that's without fringe that's benefits. Without Total cost is 44600 That's the number that he's got here. Our fund balance for this year? Actually, the audit reads 2.2, sir. That's a big difference. That's why I asked that. Yeah, 2.2. You know, I'd like to see a real simple balance sheet which shows fund balance, expenses, Income, balance again. Where do you see that two million? Page, Leroy. page six. Of the audit. Page six. Seven. Probably had more. Two point four million. Not two point one. Yeah. Yeah. Two point two eight. A million dollars, sir. That's a million dollars. Just ten thousand. That's up, buddy. And so, that by tomorrow, can somebody call us with that number? Could, Leroy, excuse me. Could you ex explain the uh, the letter D? It says uh, one one point zero nine two six seventeen. The financial highlights. Uh, page D, boss. Yeah, page D, and it's still in the financial statement. Uh, audit D. There's six or seven. Which page? I'm sorry. There's uh, seven pages. I'm looking at the financial highlights. I don't have the discussion and analysts. You only have the the number section. Have it. It's on your audit. Go over here to the audit tab. On the back. Oh, on the back. Audit tab. And then you have your financial annual financial and compliance report. And then you go to D, and it's showing fund balance of. 1.092617 as adjusted for 2020 and 2019, which is available uh, for spending at government restrictions. So, so is it 2 million that you're saying, or is it 1.09? One, 1 Page 6 shows, it shows um, fund balance at year end and then 20. Is 2.2. Yeah, yeah, you do. You. Oh, okay, I see it, I see it. We're not, we're, they're, not, they're not marked ours. It's, it's on the green. I mean, the red one. The red one? Gotcha. I see it. 
Yeah. We're talking about <coughs> financial highlights. Indeed. Yeah. I'm, looking for, I'm looking at page. And I'll yeah, send you the, uh, the amount. Oh. Yeah, I'll do that. That, see way, it, that way we'll all know by tomorrow what our fund balance is. Oh, okay, Without we'll, be guessing and right. going back on old we'll go further in that. And then but we'll get a tomorrow true number. Tomorrow will tell us this is our fund balance and we'll all know. I think that's... Right. Issue, yeah. And then we'll get a true number after the audit. Uh, aside from that, um, he was talking, we're, we've been talking about EDA grants. If I remember correctly, back when we did uh, Lexus, Mr. Arjona, I remember there was... Um, that EDA was also a matching grant. Remember that? The EDA grant for Lexus? It had to be, right? I think it was also 80-20. If I'm not mistaken, Lexus was also going to put a portion that we're going to participate financially. Did we ever recover that money? That's somewhere here? No, not. not at all. It's already, it's, it's already said it's a so yes. It's but it's what's the figure? Do you know? From uh, it was 200 and 249? 249,000? 249, it's already in, 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 uh, it's in our cap. 9,000 in addition to the 2.4 or 1.4 is in there. We, we just don't have the money. Council, is that? Are we at that point, or we still have another next We're meeting? Way What's the time frame? Well, by when do they need to have it? By the thirty-first. The thirtieth. Well, then that tells me that this is. We're there now. <laughs> We're there now. Yeah. We don't have another month, right? Do you guys have any other questions or comments on the budget? I, 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 I'd feel, I'd feel more comfortable. If we have one s solid number or source of information instead of getting different numbers. One but it's totally different than the budget. The month finishes on Tuesday, on Thursday, so next we month. We can submit this, gentlemen. We can <coughs> submit this. We can approve this to be submitted to the city council for approval. And then later come back and do a change if we need to. There's nothing wrong with that. Am I correct? We can always do amendments. Yeah, we can always do amendments. So I think that for the sake of uh, getting this thing done, there's nothing big that's, that shoots out as at us that's different from last year other than that new position that he's requesting. That's really all that we have to approve. He's saying that it's it's called a city media computer specialist. Uh, and it'll be, this position will be doing what, Mr. Arjona, again? Pretty much anything that has to do with uh, media, IT work, creative, uh, pretty much anything under the IT department. For both of that employee, or we're gonna hire some? Sure. That employee will be doing both work for the city and for us? For the most part, he's going to be for the EDC, but his main duties is going to be work on the city. But is he going to be a city employee or an EDC employee? He'll be a city employee. He just gets his the, uh, EDC DPE report. Uh, uh, I, I, last time he presented, Mr. Arjona presented something like that was with uh, Ms. Laura. What's her last name? Rodriguez. I never agreed to that. I mean, it's it's very difficult to have uh, a position 
split between both. Well, but but. Or the other way around. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. So, so that's what it sounds like again. No, I under it's it's an EDC employee. No, it's going to be a city employee, but we're going to pay the salary. So it's the other way around. That's what he's proposing yeah. in this. Our work comes first. Don't we have that in, in our MOU? thought we did. No, I think I think it includes that too. They, it does. I, nobody has that MOU? Do you have it? I would have brought mine because uh, I remember seeing the. <coughs> yeah, so right now we have a, a vote, and, and possibly uh, we can come back and make any changes that need to be made. Right at this point in time, I'm going to approve the budget as presented to be submitted to the city council for approval. Okay, I mean we can come back and change things. We can amend things later on. So I mean he's just making us aware of what he's asking for at this point, and the, the only significant difference from last year's budget is that new position. I'd like to revisit that MOU to make sure what's on there again. Uh, Are you comfortable with, with approving this for the sake of time and then later if you want to make a change to that and amend that? Okay. 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 I'm, I'm comfortable. This is pre hire though. Like before we do anything, before they hire, before anything, come br bring it back so we can see the, the MOU and we'll pass it for the sake of, of uh, getting it approved for the, for, uh, that's my, 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 my thought. But of course, mm -hmm. once we get everything, then we actually, whether we're going to decide to uh, come back and change it, we'll come back as, as a whole. I'll make a motion to approve with the um, okay. got a motion and a second. And for the record, what I understood uh, Commissioner <coughs> Sanchez to say was that he's making a motion to approve this budget and submit it to submit to for approval to the city council, but to leave this position vacant until we decide amongst us how that position is going to go. Also, revisit that MOU just to make sure that we have clarified that there's clarification on that. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed saying sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Next item is item 7 3 discussion and possible action to authorize executive director to request proposals for financial auditing services. We got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Motion carries. Next item is discussion and possible action on sponsorship promotional for ninth annual PSJ Education Foundation Gala, which will be Thursday, September the 30th, 2021. Do you have that flyer in our packets? This is something we've helped out with every year. It goes to scholarship for the students, PSJ. What did we do last year, Mr. Hart? If I recall correctly, we've been doing a thousand. A thousand. Right around? Yes. So Motion to approve. Is there no discussion? I mean, I'd a thousand? A second. Okay. We've got a motion to approve a thousand dollar sponsorship and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item is eight, our consent agenda. We've got one, two, three, four sets of minutes. July 6, 2021, July 21st, 2021, 
August 3rd, 2021, and August 17th, 2021. Have you all had an opportunity to review the minutes? If you don't see any needs for changes or anything, then I'll entertain a motion to approve. Second. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next. President, yes, sir. Just to comment, um, just like our Gala CSJ Foundation, I know we just passed that item, but one thing that came to mind right now is um, Several city functions are coming up, and I want to start getting ready to see if we're going to participate or not as the EDC. So um, I would propose that maybe this time around we have a joint meeting with the city and um, see what, what, if at all, we're going to play a part in. That would be for the purpose of Discuss. What, what we're going to commit to as Mark. far as assistance for the city events? Correct. <coughs> I don't see a problem. If Arjona, do you see any problem doing a joint More like meeting? a workshop type working. A workshop? Because of to see exactly where, where we're at, where, where we're headed to with this. As Maybe a workshop EDC setting would be a little bit more. Well, we already have three city yeah. council members on our board. Right. <laughs> yeah. We can have the workshop amongst ourselves and figure it out, and, and they can speak on behalf of both the and EDC and, and the city council. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean invite the others if they want to participate? I mean, yeah, if they want to come, but, yeah. but we already, if they don't come, we already have enough, I think. Well, I was just thinking, be, especially because of the, um, well, we, we just have Miss uh, Commissioner Santillan, it's new, right? Right. Yeah, yeah she's the only new one. Well, we can do that. <coughs> do you have an idea of when do you want to do that? I mean, soon, one week, just, next month? Just if you do invite them, make sure that you speak to your city attorney. You're going to have to post both meetings if you have a quorum of the city also. Well, let me do this. Let me propose it, uh, take it back to the city and see what the rest of the commission would like to do. The mayor and the commissioners, the rest of them would like to do, and then we'll go from there. And I'm open to whatever date you all decide. Do that? Do that. Then our next item is number executive session. The San Juan Economic Ex uh, Development Corporation will convene an executive session in accordance with Texas Open Meeting Act governing statutes and codes annotated. Government Code Chapter 551.071. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? In a second? Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are going into executive session at 6.56 p.m. Time is now 7.39. We are reconvening this uh, San Juan Economic uh, Development Corporation meeting. We are out of executive session. There was no action to be taken out of our executive session items. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, guys.